Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, I have a dynamic duo today, not Batman and Robin. I have the mother-daughter plant-based duo of Anne and Jane Esselstyn. They have a new book that is number one in new release right now on Amazon. It is called B.A. Plant-based woman warrior, live fierce, stay bold, eat delicious. <laughs> oh, you guys, I mean, you guys are that. You guys are plant, not only plant-based, but you are women and you are warriors. And we're going to talk about that. That so, how, how do I become a, a woman warrior? Plant-based, of course. You, you oh, are the original. You are, you are based woman. You are, you're, you're in that. You're in the category of which we speak. Oh, thank you guys so much. So, congratulations on writing another incredible book. Tell us about this one. How maybe it's different from your other books? Well, I would like to just out of the gate say that this is a this is different because, as you know, AJ, you've been around the plant based block for as many decades as any of this old varsity, if you will, um, and. Back in the day, it was a lot of, for lack of just to get things going, a lot of white haired white guys talking about the research and we, occasionally we'd show up and we'd do food, yeah. like we're there for the food. So, you know, we're so much more than that. Like there's just not research behind this. There's vitality and there's energy and there's creativity and the research that I know I've done with the Cleveland Clinic. And I know that my father's theory would not have gone any farther than the tip of his tongue if my mom hadn't picked up what he said and made this thing have legs and life and flavor and texture and color. And now we are a family of 20 strong, not to mention how much of an impact they've had around the world with the research. But if she hadn't said, okay, no meat, no dairy, no oil, no sugar, no salt, no oil, like, okay, in 1980, blah, blah, when there's no internet and there's no health food stores in Cleveland, Ohio, of which to speak. And anyway, um, so this book is truly a tip of the hat to my mom, who for me was the original plant-based woman warrior and got things going for, we're now, like I said, a family of 20 strong who eat this way. And to the women who have really been the ones behind this huge effort. And you, AJ, AJ. you have continued to write your books, to do your programs, your recipes, your this or that. And a lot of this YouTube, getting information out to as many as possible, as wide spread as possible, that's what I'm talking about. So be a plant based wind warrior. Be fierce with this message. Hold tight to it. Be bold. People are going to, you know, push against and, and doubt and and mm -hmm, but and you know poo poo it. But to stay bold because this is delicious. And we wouldn't, as you don't, we wouldn't be able to eat this way if it wasn't easy and it wasn't delicious. Delicious. And Anne, you really, really were one of the first pioneers in making it delicious. And I think Jane is correct that as important as the science that your husband, Dr. Esselstyn, teaches, you can't eat the science. I mean, the science alone without the recipes are like, well, that's interesting, you know? Yeah, you have to put theory into practice. You have to go from the 2D to the 3D. And Mary McDougal, like, you know, you know, the, the old guard, if you will. I hate to call it the old guard, but. Well, no, but the original. AJ, oh, you were back there in the but you know, the thing about it, when when my when Essie started doing this, we were in Cleveland. California was like another country back then. I mean, this is in the early 80s. And um because so Ornish was doing so that. Ornish was doing something, but but we didn't even know about it. One of Essie's patients <laughs> suddenly said to him one day, you know, I just saw in Discover magazine a, an article about someone who's doing something like you. <laughs> that was the first time we had ever heard about Ornish. And it was in the about 83, 82, maybe 83. And, and then the next thing we knew about was AJ. Well, we knew about the McDougals and then AJ eating dinner with you oh no that was a dinner to remember oh, I had to lie on the oh, floor over oh, my dinner. God, that is hilarious. and dinner with her hey, jane how old were you when your family switched to plant-based because were you already grown up and out of the house um no my parents started doing this kind of like ripping but there's four of us and i'm the third in order and i would just was in my freshman year of college with one person one kid at home in high school still, and three of us in college. So not even quite 20. They did like an 83, four. Um, 
So yeah, I was just, I'm just, I mean, we all were big, you know, swimmers nationally ranked and, and we needed to eat and wanted good food and this new weird way of eating. Well, we had always hit. been a little offbeat in how we ate. I mean, when everybody else was drinking milk, we drank skim milk. We never, we never ate eggs. eggs. I mean, we had like but grape nuts and Heartland cereal back in the day, but also like Yo Play yogurt and uh, what was it? Can't even like? remember all those things. They're, yeah. they're erased. Yeah. You know, the thing is you were already an adult, so you didn't have to change your diet. It wasn't like you were living under the regime. And yet all four of you did. And I hear from so many people, and maybe you do too, that, you know, I can't get my kids to eat this way. Why, why, why were all four assistants so smart and just did what their parents said? I don't know. I think you need to know the science. I think too many people don't have a background in the science. Yeah, I, I think I think what was I, I, that's a really good question. And I'm really wondering how we all did do it, because everyone says the same thing to me, like, how do you get your kids to change? And I'm like, well, we raised our kids that way. But I changed when I was like 19. I oddly didn't ever like meat. Don't I don't ask me why. I, I used to agree. Jane, finish your hot dog kind of thing. And, um, so that, that, <laughs> that was sort of in my favor, but it, 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 it happened. Like it, we would come home for the summer still. And like, we'd all be training with swimming still. So it helped that we were home and eating this way. So we would go back to college and be like, well, I'm vegetarian or actually kind of meat. vegan wasn't even a word yet. I can then. remember one time our youngest Zeb, who was in high school when we had really switched and uh, one day at lunch, the woman behind the lunch counter said, Zeb, are you, are you a vegetarian? And he hadn't even thought that that was a term that would apply to him. But he, he was he like, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, we all started to do it. And, you know, it's for kids, it's, it's a the progress line looks like this. You know, you, you're eating this way and then like you're going to go to a friend's party with like cheese pizza and cake or whatever. And, and then you go to here, there. And so, it, it, and now we all just completely, we're all plant-based, all of our spouses, all, 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 all our 10 kids, grandchildren, all 20 of us in the family. That's just incredible. That's like such a dynasty. Did, did, did any of them ever rebel against this way of eating or, or stray a little bit? Or was it just, I mean, sure. it just I think everybody has his, her strays, but they all come back. I mean, I mean just episodic, not like I'm eating you know, meat now, but just yeah. You know, AJ, one of my jobs in writing this book, one of the things that was my favorite part was I talked to all 10 grandchildren and I asked them what they felt about being plant-based. Now, our grandchildren are aged from seven at the when I did this to 27. And I want to just read you a couple of these comments. This is Georgie, who was eight. Without being plant-based, I can't imagine how I'd live. I'd open the refrigerator and see things like chicken wrapped in plastic and just feel like, what, what happened? happened? And the, I mean, and then I can go to Zeb, who was 20 at the time. Plant-based eating checks every box, not killing anything, great for the planet, not burdened by being sick, you feel good, it's the future. And then our son rips youngest daughter hope who was seven you're gonna love this one if you eat meat you die <laughs> let's get her on the show i like that i love you that know, she, she is she's, a character oh and a half <laughs> but they, they they go on they're they're wonderful and then there's and then i really like i mean i, I just like every one of them but here's one this is rose who was 22 plant-based makes me feel free and has saved me from the emotionally turbulent diet of restriction. So many friends in their twenties are caught in. Yeah. You get that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, Jane, I recently watched the, uh, the virtual conference that was in Cleveland and you did a fantastic talk. And one of the things I found so interesting, cause this does pertain to women is how it does help women the same way it helps men. I mean, we don't think about that as much. Oh, no, no. Like oh, and, and there's a huge part of this book that is about um, how plants powerfully support women um, in the undercarriage. But I wanted to sort of um, just for before I say that um, off of what you just said about Rose's comment and AJ, I know, but with so much of your um, 
your followers and your messaging is about, um, you know, eating, eating, like, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but like intuitively eating food, eating when you're hungry, you just eating the right stuff. Um, but anyway, I know the part of why this is for plant-based women warriors is for my mom, you, all the OG women out there, but also the majority of people on the planet who prepare and shop for food and think about it are women. And the last reason why is that growing up in America as a female, I had three brothers, two older, one younger, surrounded. We were all nationally ranked swimmers at the time, recruited swimmers at, you know, I swam from Michigan. And my brothers swam for all their universities. And I, here I was, you know, crazy fit, nationally ranked swimmer. And I'm starting to worry about like, my body, my curves, what I'm eating, but I don't like how my body is like getting curvy and filling out. And my brothers hadn't thought for one second about one thing they were eating for one bite or what clothes they were wearing or how, what their identity was and their body size and what they were doing and what they're eating. Da, 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 da. All this stuff that I know as a female, as a, in America, you know, a lot of us have to figure that out. It's this burden that lands on like our, our, uh, identity of gender. So anyway, what my parents went plant-based right around that time for me, when I was like, as we just identified earlier, when I was at college and 19 and dealing with all this stuff and eating more plant-based made me feel better in my body. And, and it's just kind of everything leveled out. And I've been the same size since probably that year of college. Um, I do have some of the same clothes actually, but anyway, um, so I wanted to mention that about women and, and mindset and about food, but yes, for women, whole food plant-based nutrition benefits us from head to toe from front to back. And here's how we're going to talk about it in the undercarriage. Um, and I'm going to use a little prop. Did you, when you say virtual conference from Cleveland, did you watch the NHA? Is that what you're watching? I watched, I didn't go to it, but I watched it on, I watched it live and that was a great presentation. The CUVA. Yep. C-U-V-A. So we'll start from the back here. This is the, what women have down below in their body. Can you hold this side? In the back, we have what men have. It's an anus and it's so important. And there's so, it dictates a lot of our day, the A. And on a whole food plant-based diet, on plant-based have, diet, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff because yes, it's, there's so much fiber. We're not worrying about constipation, which bazillion people worry about all day, every day. So constipation is not an issue. Diverticulitis comes from having to strain too hard. And you're literally making your colon out pouch from straining. It has nothing to do with seeds or corn. If you ate more seeds and corn, you probably wouldn't have diverticulitis. So no constipation, not an issue with diverticulitis. And of course, along with that, hemorrhoids are not an issue when you are not straining, not pushing, you have this high fiber flow coming out from um, A. V stands for uh, vagina. And the vaginal space, of course, is the, is the as I call it in sex ed, it's just the space. It's this lobby. <laughs> and above which is so much of the important stuff in the female plumbing. Our ovaries such so benefited from having a whole food plant-based diet, along with the uterus and the uterine lining, the endometrius, endometrial lining, um, especially with women who have fibroids, which are like stalactites that grow, grow down like this dripping blood. So women sometimes get um, anemic from la- lack of blood, loss of blood when they have fibroids. And if they get on a whole food plant-based diet with no dairy and no meat, which is really part of the whole, um, what could create these fibroids, um, they aren't anemic. They don't have to get their uterus removed and they may even get pregnant. So, um, and also the vaginal space itself, I'll wrap this in in a second, how it helps with blood flow, but the urethra um, is where we urinate from or, and our, that's obviously leads up to our bladder and our kidneys. And whole food plant-based diet helps that so much because we're not getting exposed to all these intense bacteria uh, reservoirs that can live in things like chicken, which can be really resistant to antibiotics and UTIs or urinary tract infections. I know they just are so troublesome to so many people that we know, and especially in older women and older, older men too. I think that, I don't know if chicken has to do with all that stuff, but Dr. Greger, Michael Greger has all kinds of info on that. Um, 
And uh, if you have a partner who's eating chicken and has that big, that bacteria in their nether region, and you guys are muckling around, you know, there you go, you're exposed again. So data vegan um, and see in front, this is the clitoris, the clitoris, the, the, the powerhouse there in front, whatever you want to call it, the clit. This tissue is the exact same tissue of the head of the penis because men and women are made of the same Legos. Men have nipples, women have nipples, okay? Men have a head of a penis, we have the clitoris and it's under a hood, just kind of like the uh, foreskin. Um, so the clitoris is here and it responds to stimulation just the same way that the penis does, but it engorges a little bit. The shaft of the penis is called the corpus cavernosa and it engorges with blood. We have the same tissue, but it's up here inside our bodies on a pelvic floor and the corpus cavernosa and gorgeous with blood. And it's like two arms that come up and they wrap around the vaginal barrel, the vaginal space, the lobby here. And the blood flow when a woman's aroused seeps into the vaginal space that making lubrication. So lubrication, which is a woman's sign for readiness comes from blood flow, just like an erection, a man's sign for readiness comes from blood flow. So women, a whole food plant-based diet can benefit us from head head, you know, head space to toe, front to back and C to U to V to A, Kuva. Yes, these t-shirts are available. Uh, is there nothing a plant-based diet cannot do? People are going to say they love you. You're so knowledgeable. You're so helpful. You know, Jane, there's a question from Susanna who's watching live and she wanted to know, did you get any pushback from swim coaches for not eating meat? Because she's experiencing this with her son's athletic coach, if he's in the university, they're pushing protein from meat sources. Protein. Mm. No, back in the day, they didn't care. And I was doing fine athletically. I mean, I won big tens, went to NCAAs. So um, I think that they just have, if they can, if the coaches can show some research that will support like some peer reviewed research, then maybe um, they could show it to the parents and the kid and see if they really want to get on board. But if not, just there's plenty of research to support that they don't need to do. That. I mean, just look at all the huge and important and big athletes who are plant based. Mm -hmm. I mean, some might have huge. some like um, I know some like lifter. Not, I mean, they're athletes, but they're like weightlifters who want to have more like pea protein powder in their diet they, in their diet every day. But I don't I don't I know nothing about that. And I don't support that except that protein, as you know, AJ, it's just the country's biggest myth. Yeah. The world's biggest myth. Now, you're not kidding. That, that's amazing. So how are the recipes in this book going to support us being a warrior? How are they different from the other wonderful hundreds of recipes that you wrote in other books and do at demonstrate on your YouTube channel? I love that episode recently, by the way, with the Gato Gato. God, that was so delicious. She, our, my neighbor, she's wonderful. Our neighbor, um, our professor. Vanessa, Professor Vanessa, um, it, these these recipes are well. As you know, Essie's pr program we've called um, Plant Strong, Perfect, Plant Perfect, and because Rips Rips, and, you know, is Plant Strong. Here, here, you're, and, let's be clear. But we started that off, but so Essie's program about reversing heart disease is called Plant Perfect. Rip, I, I made no, these. No. We, we have no meat, no oil, no dairy. And here, like you, no nuts and avocado. And it's a, a much tighter program. And these, it's wonderful yeah. for weight loss and for diabetes, and especially it's directed for heart disease. Because these guys, people with heart disease, it is they have to be compliant for their, for their health, literally their health in the moment. And it's so hard out there. And AJ, you are such a proponent of it to find good recipes without nuts and oil and then with rips rip um rip wrote uh plant strong plant strong and i did all the recipes in there and then the engine two seven day recipe which i did the recipes in and then the engine two cookbook which was by rip and jane finally made it to the cover um the, we, this is these are all in the plant strong category which is the same as what you just said no Meat, um, no oil, no dairy. But these plant strong books do use some avocado and some nuts. And it's kind of for the firefighter folks, the athletes, younger, healthier people who want to just maintain health. And they're not worried about reversing 
of a foundation of heart disease or stroke risk or diabetes, type two diabetes um, or metabolic syndrome, obesity, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. this, our book, which you asked about, is sort of a really awesome combination of how we truly do eat because we do eat plant perfect and plant strong. Like we- the And one of the cool things in here is that the recipes are marked um, our publisher was awesome. Like here's, this is a, this is called grits and greens. And this recipe says heart disease friendly right there. So all of these, every recipe is it's indicated whether it's um, like the sesame ginger sauce, heart disease friendly, but the green goddess sauce to make it heart disease friendly substitute the um, uh, what beans, what we, uh, we use cashews or something in here, but substitute them for cannellini beans. And then that's heart disease friendly. So it, it's really user friendly for people who cut, who are interested in some of the Esselstyn's work. You know, you can find your way no matter how you eat. Yeah. Speaking of the Esselstyn's work, you have something that I really wasn't familiar with until I actually saw, saw you, your whole family give a presentation for the eat well, stay well meetup group in Columbia, Maryland for my friend, Sharon McRae. I tell us about the Esselstyn foundation and your work and how we can support that. Oh, Brian. <laughs> um, <laughs> The Esselstyn Foundation hey, is Brian. a nonprofit branch of. Thank you. Can you give it a hot cha cha, please? Esselstyn Foundation um, was founded how many years? Three years ago? Yep, three years ago. It was founded three years ago. And because we wanted to keep doing this work, and here's Brian Hart. Hi. Brian is the executive director, and he is one brilliant guy who, <laughs> AJ unbelievable the things that he has created so, well so brian the our mission the mission of the so the esselson foundation we we decided to create because we wanted to fill the gap we wanted to make sure that this type of information was not limited to people only people who could pay you know go through a paywall to get the information so we partner with existing nonprofits um, such as schools hospitals you know teaching hospitals uh groups of medical residents um, we love we, getting medical students and we give all of our programming away for free. So we don't charge at all. And uh, if you can, we always say, if you can fill the room virtually, we will talk about plant-based eating with you. Yeah. And so um, like we, we just gave a talk. We just gave a presentation this morning to case some staff members at case, case university, Western. case Western university here in Cleveland. And then tonight we're going to be with, and tonight we're working with um, a res medical group in Connecticut, a medical group in Connecticut. And so uh yeah. So, and we worked with like a small town in Uganda recently, which was oh my, and oh, tell, so, oh, that's tell, fascinating. I love it. We learned so much from this this town in Uganda. They 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 had so many questions like, well, when can we eat our pasho? And we're like, what's pasho? Remember that? And pasho um, is cornmeal. It's cornmeal, which we it's grits and greens. I just showed you grits and greens, but they're putting red palm oil with almost every dish. So we had to just sort of say, hey you guys have all the right food. They've got sweet potatoes, beans, cassava, um, pasha, which is this, the cornmeal, pumpkin, and then um, matoke, which is- Which is a, like a green banana. Green bananas. And all those things are perfect, but they're just preparing them with but, everything has- Yeah, they're coating them with this uh, palm kernel oil, which I guess in, is causing- Very high. Right, a lot of problems, especially with type two diabetes in, on the continent of Africa. So- um, It's so confusing because all their, their their elders, you know, didn't get this, but they're suddenly getting all these diseases. So what's going on? It's just all that- So rest. anyway, in a nutshell, we're a 501c3. We're totally publicly uh, supported and um, through donations. And, you know, our most common donation is probably $25. You know, we, we feel like we're a grassroots movement. Um, but again, we want to make sure that this information is not relegated to, and we want to, we really want to, you know, our sort of um, bumper sticker slogan is we want to push the plant-based message outside of the Whole Foods network. We want to, you know, we love Whole Foods, but there's this belief out there that, that plant-based eating is only for people who can afford to pay for these fancy organic foods and everything. And so our job is really to make this a people's movement. So like one of our presentations we just gave today was plant-based eating on a budget. Um, and it's astounding how you can eat on pennies inexpensively on a dollar. you can eat this. Yeah, if you really do 
Do Why you don't you come on my show and give that presentation? It sounds fantastic. Invite us to and we will. Oh, I didn't know. I couldn't invite something I didn't know existed, but you are totally invited now. Now, Brian, since you're a nonprofit, can people, you know, you know, you know, Amazon Prime, can people sure. make their Amazon Prime charity? Because that's yeah. a great way to help uh, without, you know, necessarily making a donation. Yeah, through through Am Amazon Smile. We are registered for Amazon Smile. So you can just convert your, you know, your giving to on Amazon Smile to the Esselstyn Foundation. We, we're learning all these things too. Like Facebook has a thing. Uh, isn't, isn't it Facebook? I don't know. Somebody yeah. I mean, we get money through Facebook sometimes. We get oh, Meta. Money. Meta. Yeah. Wow. Hey, as long as you're here, Brian, what's it like being married to a firecracker and having a, uh, a mother-in-law that's one too? It's still of a, a mother-in-law. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. I don't often get to make a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, decisions. Brian, <laughs> ah, yes, you do. <laughs> it's much easier to go with the flow, AJ. That's just the bottom line. Brian yeah. is so much. We count on Brian oh, for our internet, for all our knowledge. Printer. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Brian, were you already plant-based when you met Jane or did she I turn? Was. I was a vegetarian. And of course, you know, you know how the vegetarian thing goes. Like you can be a lot of different versions of vegetarian. So when I met Jane, I was a vegetarian. I think that's one of the reasons we hit it off is we were both plant-based. But um, like many people who, and I went, in, I got into this in my twenties. And so I've, I've been a lot of different versions. And then once I met Jane, learned about the research, learned about what Dr. Esselstyn was teaching and understood the science, you know, I became totally whole food plant-based and uh, haven't, haven't looked back. So here I am. And we have him running our family foundation. So he truly yeah. is like, He's it. Were they a big deal? Like, because the Esselstyns are like, like, the, like the first family and of, of plant-based. Was, was Dr. Essie a big deal to you when you knew him or he wasn't quite yet the status he is now? No, he, he had, he had published it. his book. You no, know, he hadn't. He hadn't? Are you sure? Right. The book came out in 2007 and we were married in... 97. I felt like the book was already out. No. Maybe just, the, just the, oh, maybe the articles were already out, but yeah. the book wasn't out yet. I guess that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, um, you know, I just thought of him as this really, you know, hard nosed doctor who just really didn't allow people to skimp on his diet. And uh, but what I found out over the years is that, you know, he's a very compassionate guy who really cares about people and, and is strict for a reason. He works with really sick people who need to change the way they live. Um, and he saved I mean, I can't tell you how many times and on a week goes by with the Esselstyn Foundation that I don't get an email from somebody that said, Dr. Esselstyn saved, saved their life. So it's, it's pretty amazing. One wow. other fact about Brian is he is one awesome cook. Way better than all of us. <laughs> he is way the, better. He is the now, you should come on and do a cooking demo and talk about the foundation. Absolutely. Look, look out for the invitation, Esselstyn Foundation. I don't mind helping out, but I don't have the spark that Ann and Jane have. Brian. You know, oh, you do. <laughs> So here's a question from Lily. What were the side effects from the African people from eating all that palm oil? They were type two diabetes. I mean, they, they were having a, I didn't realize that type two by type. I didn't realize that until I did some research that type two diabetes is becoming a, a continental, you know, it, it's the continent of Africa is being, is being, is being overwhelmed by this type two diabetes crisis. And it's basically because all these people are transitioning from their traditional diets that were mostly, if not all plant-based to more Western diets and putting all this palm kernel oil in, which is just ravaging their bodies. Cause it's, it's uh, you know, it's all the bad oh, stuff. So and so, saturated. yeah. And as their di diets are modernizing, they're eating more meat and then they're getting into trouble. So yeah. it's, it's, we're watching it happen in real time. You know, and palm oil also is not friendly towards the animals or the environment. I mean, if you're going to eat oil, it's one of the worst for exactly. Yeah. And it just ravages the countryside as well. Well, thank you for educating them. And Mary, who's watching. Uh, you, get, uh, you, all, you three get back to it. Thank oh, you. It is okay. Brian. Nice, to, nice to see you, Brian. Mary's saying she would love any tips that you may have as she kicks off a new plant-based lifestyle group here at a 55 and over, over community. A lot of people are sick here. They don't need to be. Maybe I can have you, and I'm thinking she means you, as the foundation as a guest sometime, because you said if we fill the room. Absolutely. Reach out to us uh, through our uh, website. Is that Mary? And what was her name? Yeah, her name is Mary Mackey. Mary yeah. Mac, Mac, Mackey, we'd love to have you. Reach out to us through our website, 
Uh, which I've is been posting the link in case they want to make a donation. So Mary, I just posted it again. It's Esselstyn Foundation, EsselstynFamilyFoundation.org. Just click. Oh, there. Just reach out to us, and like I said, if you can get if you can get twenty five people in a room, we will present. And we have us, you know, we've got six different presentations we do. We mm -hmm. love we love working with plant based affinity groups. Um, we're especially interested in getting this message out to people that maybe not have not already heard it. So that's so your group. Your if group your group be, can advertise and bring the public in, and we can get fifty people on the call, we would love that. We love to optimize and get as many people in the room as we can. It sounds like it might be like a Dell Web community. Oh yeah, sure. so that would be great to work with them because. Um, we can do all kinds of demos and all kinds of presentations. One of the best presentations Brian does is how to get the men we love off meat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, not, and the other one I love is be a plant-based rebel. If you have a little hair and you marry, we can do that one. Um, all right. So, uh, well, you know, Brian is also the master of bowls and this book is filled with bowls. Build your own bowl. Anyway. Um, All right. Thank off you. To nice, to, nice to see you, Brian. So here's a question from, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Sorry. My cat's going up. Karen says, is it okay to eat flax seeds and chia seeds if you're not eating nuts and seeds? Well, that's a seed. If you're following Essie's, Dr. Essie's program. Must eat them. Yes. They have omega-3 flax and chia are wonderful. Yeah, flax and chia are great, and because they have a great omega three, omega six ratio, um, of it's almost close to one to one, and things like almonds have a one to fifteen hundred or more, it, crazy. So it's a very inflammatory ratio, omega three, omega six. So that's those are good nuts and seeds. My dad really is referring to, um, or if she's if she's on Essie's. Plan. Jane has my favorite recipe in here, which is your seed bark. Oh. Wow. wow. Well, seed bark is five different seeds, but we have seed and nut bark in here. Oh, well. Seed bark is in. Even, no, seed even bark so, is the in seed it is here. so delicious. It's How much flax or chia do you recommend people have each day if they're following Dr. Essie's program? One to two tablespoons. Whatever, whatever your body can handle. Some people can't handle that much at first. Just do start with like a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, or teaspoon if that's too much. Um, but it's, Lily, Lily says, I like eating potato samosas, but they have a little palm oil. Yikes. So am I hurting your body? Yes. Yeah. Get rid of that palm oil. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to have, you don't want to have that um, palm oil and um, samosas, you know, the filling's really great. Just go without that white flour that's been deep. Fried. It's like a big French fry that has good stuff inside of it. Yeah. Sorry. They're tasty. Don't get me wrong. I you can make them without. AJ, but you know what, you know, when we knew we were on track with this book. When we were, we were, we were making, we were, we got the contract for this book on March 7th, 2020, oh. right as COVID was like, and we live next door to each other. So, so we were like, suddenly the world closed down and I was like, okay, I'm going to the store for you guys. And, you know, goggles, mask, whatever, and getting all the food. And so after about, you know, we had, we had like two years to get the book out. So after, I don't know, maybe a close to a year, we said, okay, let's see where we are with this. We have like six breakfasts that we're really psyched about. We have, I don't know, like maybe seven lunches and the, you know, maybe 10 dinners. We had 44 desserts. So we knew we were on track to make this book for women because we were had so many amazing desserts lined up, ready to go. And every night, well. So Essie and I, during yeah. the COVID time, ended up watching a lot of TV at night. So we would be sitting in our room, back room, watching TV. And the door would jangle and it would be Jane and my mouth would begin to water because I would know that she had another example of a brownie she was trying to, to figure perfect. out to perfect. It took her 12 tries and we couldn't stand it when she had perfected it because we didn't have any more desserts coming. And when it was done, my dad said, Jane, this one's out of sight. So it's called the out of sight brownie. That's but that's, right. And we have a couple of them, but this one I love making. These are um, lemon squares. Uh, can you see it? You so won't believe is, the base. Oh, so that, that is mouthwatering. Who did the photographs? Oh, oh our photographer is. She's what? awesome. She's amazing. Uh, I keep reading first. Karen, Karen McKenna. She was wonderful. Wow. Wow. wonderful. Um, but, but wait, I want you to guess. This is a lemon square. What do you think makes it like? You, you can probably guess the cross at the top. I'm going to guess sweet potato. Like No. Nope. Nope. Not guess. 
So the crust I is the, believe, cru- Jane, the crust is me. like, uh, you know, the date nut yeah, stuff. And then the topping on top, the white part is the typical, you know, silicon tofu, lime or lemon, Lucy, whatever. What's you you the, know, the, but what's the lemon stuff? AJ, we're talking to you. I mean, I would, it looked like maybe it was with the white sweet potato. What's the lemon stuff? Beans. Uh, go. Ha! Oats. Oh, oatmeal. Oh, nice. Oh, that's even better. In the morning, and because we have a lemon oat, we have a lemon oat recipe that's like a wonderful light lemon oats, but I added more zest, more juice, and a little more sweet for it to be a dessert, a little more maple syrup. And I added some, what are those golden threads that you put in Spain? Saffron. 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 Added a few threads of saffron, so it really made it yellow. And then just put it in the fridge because it sets, you know, it's just like any complex carbohydrate just sets so well. So it's so yummy, these, these lemon squares. And I got some teenage approval from it. We had some friends over and I was like, you guys try these. I need to know yes or no. And they were like, they're vegan. They're, they, they're different, but they're good. So it was like, it was like this. Uh, you know. That is amazing. So question from Heather, should we grind the flax as ground meal rather than whole? Yes, because the whole goes right through you. Whew. Okay. And the flax seed, and, you get the good, it, or you can buy it ground. If you do that, you need to refrigerate it or freeze it. Yeah, go ransom. So Lori Join Late wants to know the name of the book, and I'll, I'll post a link where they can get it. We get to we love we love saying it. Ready? The book is "Be, Be a Plant Based Woman Warrior." Live fierce, stay bold, eat delicious. <laughs> I'm posting the link. You guys get that right now. People love you guys. They're comparing you to Lucy and Ethel. But which, which one is which? <laughs> <laughs> you guys work so great together. And you, you, you do about one, one video a week on your YouTube channel? 10 days. We try not to be rhythmic about it because otherwise people just are like, oh, delete, delete, delete. So we, we uh, try to do about 10 days-ish. We might be between eight and 14. But, but I think they're very helpful for people, particularly starting out, because how do you cook an onion without oil. I mean, we have a video cooking an onion without oil. I mean, it's so easy. Yeah. And I mean, as you know, so, Anne, did you ever think you'd be a YouTube sensation in your eighties? No, I didn't. I I still um, don't really get to YouTube very easily. She's Uh, like, Jane, send me the link of our most recent one. I'm like, subscribe. She's like, I can't because I'm still on AOL and AOL is not compatible with Google. So she can't get Oh, that is hilarious. I love that. Um, Sheila's asking, uh, will there, will you do any new YouTube videos from your new book? Oh gosh. Yes. We've already actually filmed a few because like you saw with our Gato Gato, um, the Indonesian peanut sauce dish, we have some neighbors and friends who contribute things to the book and they all have like summertime more available slots. So we've slotted them in to do some stuff. We have like four or five already done. And, um, we're teeing things up for August because it comes out August 23rd. Oh, you can pre-order now. Actually, if you pre-order, we made a, um, a video, a video that's not going to be on YouTube, but if you buy, if you pre-order and you have your receipt, you go to my, our, my website, which is janeusselston.com and you can type your receipt number in. I, I haven't done it yet. So I don't know if it really works that smoothly, but let me know. And the video, you get to watch the free video and with the recipe. The and, recipe. Wait to, and the recipe is so good. It makes my mouth water to think about it. Share what it is. Well, I, I can't remember. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Gouda. It's, it's plant, plant-based plant smoked Gouda, Gouda with baked tofu and arugula or spinach sandwich bun. Um, so it's this yummy, I mean, plant-based Gouda is so yummy. Oh, that sounds amazing. You do some conferences of your own, Jane. You want to talk about those and tell us when the next one is and how people can find out about them? Thank you. Yes. Um, she I, just finished having, excuse me, uh, her camp, which is crazy much fun. She calls it camp. No, we call it well now camp. Well now. Well now. It's a well-known camp. We just, we just finished. It's for plant-based women warriors. That's we got the name for the book because the camp predates the book and people were like, what's, who's this camp for? And I was like, it's just, there's no lecture. There's no sitting on your bum. There's no, 
blah, 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 blah. It's just everybody who eats whole food plant-based and is filled with energy and they want to have camps. We've got arts and crafts class. We've got dance class. We've got writing class and another fabric and fiber class and um, talent shows and hikes and yoga and just this great activity with other women and who identify as women. And we all eat plant-based food and, all day long. And including tire pulling. The tire drag. I don't know if you've seen the Ann's tire dragging videos. Whoa. How do you do it? That's so amazing. we have a tire drag relay. <laughs> James, Brian, is who you just met, is a, has always done these crazy ultra, ultra distance athlete. things. And yeah. one of the things he had to do is he was going off to some ice, you know, ice covered land and he had to pull a sled and he had to, uh, anyway, and so he was practicing by pulling a tire training, training for that. And so one day I said, Brian, let me try that. And I tried it and it was like hard, but it was like, my, this is kind of good. good exercise. And Wait. you can get a lot of exercise fairly quickly. Like I just did a little tire drag this morning because we have such a big day ahead of us. Well, we, we t- were tired dragging last night together and I, and we were having so much fun and some neighbors were going by like, Oh my God, you dry tight pulling those tires again. And, and uh, I was like, Brian, we could actually have a little company here of making this tire dragging kit. <laughs> Rather, <laughs> anyway, but your whole family has been bitten by the exercise bug. And that, that wasn't how I grew up. How, is that just genetic that you and Essie always exercised and modeled it for your children? Well, she's yeah. one of the best athletes out there. And my well, dad, he's always, you may have heard. Yeah. Was an athlete. An athlete always, like an Olympic gold medal athlete. Right. And well, even when, when our kids were little, I mean, he was out running, um, well, you were doing Jack and I felt the diving board. I mean, come on. Yeah. But I mean, he, but, but I'm just commenting that he, he, yeah, he's they've always, they, he's riding the bike when he got home from work. Um, but you asked about, well, yeah, but you're now an athlete. Well, I'm not an athlete. I spin an hour a day, but I mean, I don't put myself in your class, but you guys always seem to have, the whole family seems to, to have done some sort of meaningful exercise or movement like your whole life. As you're getting older, if you don't keep exercise, you just freeze up. Yeah. That it's so true. You know, I had, I had um, uh, Elaine Lillane on the show, the wife of Jack Lillane. And even though she doesn't eat like us, I mean, the, she has the exercise piece. And even in her 90s, she's lifting weights and everything like that. That's great. That's I so wondered. important. Lori says she just pre-ordered the book now. So I'm posting that. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, well, I so- want to be about events if you don't mind. So yes, we ha- I just finished having a camp, which we have in June every year. And we do it out of, out of a college campus because it's so fun to be on a campus and live in dorms and kind of be at camp. But um, and, uh, throughout the fall, we have small intimate events. Like there's like 24 people. And then my mom and dad are there. And Brian and I are there. Are there um, and they're live. But this one's called Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior. Come and join us. We're going to cook bazillion recipes out of the book with you and like with the participants. And we're going to have all kinds of vivacious activity like tire dragging and other things going on during the day. So please join us again. You can sign up. Um, we have it at a most beautiful place just outside Cleveland. The last scene of the Forks Over Knives movie was filmed at that, uh, uh, at the knob where we, where we host this event. Um, but every March, uh, right around the day, International Day of the Woman, we have a conference for women. I didn't even know there was an International Day of the Woman. When is that? It's all, it's March 8th. So the conference falls around that date whenever whatever you've done that for how many years jane a lot this will be our eighth year and we've had uh, i mean we have so many great so many amazing women we i've gotten to know well and like robin shutkin and uh christy funk and sarai stanzik and uh, robin sorry uh monica agarwal and michelle mcmackin um just I'm, fabulous. I'm forgetting people. Nice. I love it. I love it. Uh, so question about cookware f- from Carol. Do you guys have a favorite safe nonstick frying pan? Nope. We try a whole bunch and they work for like a week or two. And then my kids use a spatula <laughs> and, or they put, they put the hot pan in the, in the cold water. So I have destroyed so many different pans. I got, I, a pr- none. I got th- two green pans as a present. And um, we go to the farm in upstate New York over the summer, 
but lots of family members go. Uh I was so excited about these green pans. Went back uh, a few months later. Destroyed. Destroyed. I mean, I don't you know. You have to treat them right. You, you have to just, you can't put hot water in them when they're hot. You can't walk, put, you know, wet them when they're hot. You just have to treat them like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Uh, okay. Nikki says, I'm vegan. You know what I just learned, J- AJ, and I don't know if Jane said it, that you can put uh, parchment paper in a pan and and that creates a nice little nonstick layer. A little st- possible nine stick layer. Like to make pancakes or something. I haven't tried it. Nice. Do you guys eat? I know that when a long time ago you were resistant to getting an instant pot, and did you ever get one and ever start using it? I have one because you sent it to me. <laughs> but you haven't used it yet? <laughs> I've used it, but it also it continues to scare me. It, <gasps> You've got to come to Cleveland. All right, I'll come just to give you an instant pot lesson. What, what about an air fryer? Have you gotten into that yet? We have a, a toaster oven that has, like our toaster air. oven has air, an air, it goes like toast, bake, air fry. So we can air fry, you know what I mean? It's I'm so bad at reading the directions on anything <laughs> that I haven't figured out how to use my air fry. <laughs> well, um, I, 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 you had, come. she's only had it for like three years. That is hilarious. Well, maybe as soon as you figure out how to subscribe to your own YouTube channel, the next thing in the series of events will be the instant pot. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. You mean, but no, AJ, philosophically, it seems to me by the time the air, the instant pot is ready to go, it's a few minutes and then it's a few minutes for, uh, for it to unload. So you know, my kale is ready if I just put it on the stove. I mean, I, I think I would say it's a pretty much close and, timing. And to tell you the truth, we, I mean, like we have done five books in 10 years. And, you know, with you and I have done a number, you've done three books in 15 years. We want to keep it user-friendly to no matter what people have. And if you say, do this in your Instapot and do this in your bread breaker and do this in your air fryer with, with your immersion blender, like, we have to just sort of keep it, um, I don't even have the right word, but just not too AJ, fancy, fancy. I know you're right about the uh, all those things. You're right. I agree with like something like kale, it's not necessary, but when you're making like a soup, it's it's just so easy to just dump it in and let it do its thing for me. Yeah. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to babysit it. Okay. So we have a question from Nikki. I'm vegan, but I get tired in the afternoon. I try not to drink coffee. What can help me? More sleep, more food, and energy breeds energy. Does she want it? Does Nikki want to eat something? She's not saying. She's just tired in the afternoon. Are you 102? <laughs> we don't know. Maybe she'll post it. Some people don't have a lot of energy, period. She was born with like. Take a nap. Well, Take you're the, ener- and you've been called even by your husband, the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. But I, I would say take a nap. And also, you know, find I mean, a 10 something, minute nap. To, do- something to eat that might p- pick you up. Um, well, that, that, that's what I can't say that. What do you mean? Like banana? Well, I mean, if, if you're really, if you're, if you're sleepy, I think you're not sleeping enough, but if you're getting older, you do need to nap a little more. Like little kids nap a lot as we get older and we sleep, you know, get learn to sleep through the night. We're, we're good. And then as we get older, I mean, I'm saying like, you know, past 75 ish. I, I sleep through all the programs <laughs> at night. We watch on TV because I really should be in bed. Yeah. But she's just, <sighs> well, you know, other countries, they actually take a siesta after lunch. She wants to take a nap. Yeah. But also one thing that I find delicious is a tiny bit of oats. I mean, just steal a regular oats, maybe a few tablespoons and some frozen blueberries and maybe a few frozen cherries and zap it in the microwave. Or just let it melt. Or let it melt. That's such a nice, quick little snack. I love cherries and I love cherries in anything. Don't you love cherries? And they're so good right now. Yeah, they're so great right now. Yeah. She yeah. says she's not overweight, but she wants to nap or drink coffee in the afternoon. Well, well then do it. Drink coffee. I mean, drink. <laughs> <laughs> 
do one or the other, maybe. And coffee in the afternoon, like it might keep you up at night, which makes you want to nap. Like, it, what are you perpetuating with that? Does she drink, does she drink coffee in the morning? I, I, we need more information. Mm. You know, do, I, I noticed on your website, because I, I, I was posting the link, you do consultations. We, yeah, that's, that's, that's. Jane exactly. does. And I'm happy to have you join me. Jane and Anne will be doing them in the future yeah. together. Jane. That'd be great, mommy. <laughs> It, actually, I'd be flooded. Everyone would, would dine to talk to her. Yeah, people would love it. I, do you guys have any uh, other appearances coming up, either in your own conferences or somebody else's? Well, Rip has some things coming up that are really exciting. Jane, you know, Jane presents. Well, no, uh, Plant Stock. Sorry, Plant Stock is coming up, which is just, a, it's now virtual, but it's a whole lot of cooking this time, which is exciting. And that's in early September, mid meh, September 9 to 11 ish. And then um, we have our Sedona. event live in Cleveland. If you want to join us on 917, yay, women come join, join. So fun. Drag the tire, make the food. Um, and then in October, um, early October, when's, when's plant strong conference? Uh, October plant strong immersion. He ripped us immersions and, and Brian and, and Anna Nessie and I are all part of it. And they are just fabulous. It's in early October um, and it's about a five, six day stretch of time. Amazing and food, amazing people, amazing fun activities, talks. And, um, and then we all always have around Thanksgiving. So in, in November, we have a how to wrap your head, heart and hands around plant-based eating and the holidays. So we have this event again at the Knob Live in Cleveland. And that will, of course, be a little bit dependent upon the current um, COVID. COVID exposure situation. Doing it before Thanksgiving, before everyone sort of mixes themselves together is going to be our aim. So two of the four kids are really involved in, in being plant-based educators. Any of the grandchildren going into this field at all? My public, Our publicist is um, our 23-year-old daughter. Her name's Kryle, my mom's maiden name. And she um, just graduated from Kenyon. And she also was a publicist for the Esselstyn Foundation. So she's sort of in this social media, TikTok oh, scene. She's and also she's got working right now for Tushy. Have you Do heard you know of, Tushy? Have you heard of Hello Tushy? No, that's, I love oh, the name though. It's going to be your new gift to give all your speakers. It's a portable bidet. It hooks into that little like, flexible metal, like, um, looks like, what do knights wear? Chain mail, with a chain mail tube that goes from your wall to your toilet. It hooks into that and it just, it sprays your, I always joke, it, it cleans your tushy and your bushy. And <laughs> so she's doing TikToks for them. So this, the world's moving into the social media realm and it's just so cool that she's got her hands wrapped around what that stuff is. And um, she's with this hilarious company if you want to get a, a portable bidet, you just count code would be I heart H A R T poop, isn't it? I heart poop. I heart poop. Not the simple because oh. my, my husband's last name is H A R T. So I heart poop. Um, 20% off. 20 percent off at Hello Tushy for your portable bidet. Did not know we were going to talk, be talking about cleaning our tushies and our bushies here. That is, <laughs> you'd be a great copywriter, Jane. <laughs> That is hilarious. So at our camp, we gave, they also make toilet paper, like bamboo toilet paper. So you, you clean yourself with the water first and then you just do dab, dab, dry off with the toilet paper. So it saves so much toilet paper and trees and resources and blah, 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 blah. So I was giving away um, tushy toilet paper rolls when people would like win the three-legged race at camp or someone gave a great poem presentation or whatever. And, I, um, and on each toilet paper roll, we, we put little phrases like, way to push. Or way to wipe the field. Or you're number one. Here's for your number two. Oh my God. You're all, hilarious. I all love these it. great phrases and sayings. And Tushy, like Crowd took pictures of it. And Tushy loved it. <coughs> so they're going to have toilet paper with those kinds of phrases now. That's a great <laughs> idea. Pat, how did we live this long without it? Patty says, I love these girls. Thank you for inspiring us and providing us so much information. Carol says she loves watching your YouTube videos. She's made your pro athlete burgers several times now. Do you guys have like a, like a fan favorite recipe, like one that just people are like that you're known for? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I, a favorite 
one favorite. that's been viewed a lot is how to eat greens as many times a day as possible. But I think that was kind of part of, I think someone had that part of a curriculum somewhere. I don't know. It went boom, but that's not a great fan favorite necessarily. I think most of Brian's recipes are fan favorites. Things like, I mean, he does sloppy Joe's, um, vegan chili or, or plant-based chili. Plant-based, uh, lasagna. Joe's. Oh my gosh. His lasagna. Mm. Mm. I've always wanted to have a lasagna uh, competition with Rip because I'm known for my lasagna too. And I'm like, let's just have a throwdown in person. Oh, you know, it, 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 his lasagna isn't Rip's, it's Brian's. Right. No, but I'm just saying we should all have like a lasagna. You know what I'd love? And I've talked to your brother about this is I, I've done a few Iron Chefs on the show. I'd love to have you and Rip or maybe you and Brian or Brian and Rip just compete together. <laughs> well, that would AJ, be, that'd you, be a riot. You, you'd win. No, no, I mean, no, but I would host it. I mean, I wouldn't be cooking this, but but that would be a lot of fun. So here's a question from Shelly. She says, Wait, I have heart. Oh, AJ, here, this is a lasagna in, that's in the book. Oh, wow. That is such great photography. Isn't that great? That looks amazing. That, yeah. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, you know, lasagna is so pretty. Anyway, go, you had a question from somebody. Yeah, no, Shelly says, I have heart disease, but it's not due to clogged arteries. I cannot determine if nuts and avocado are therefore still problematic. What do you Austin ladies think in general? Is this the case? Heart disease yet, like she's saying, it's the, if it's not vascular disease, as far as like plaque buildup and whatnot, and if it's a valve issue, if it's electronic, if it's a, it's an AFib, totally different ball of wax. So she, this is, that's a, this is a different consultation. And I don't AJ, think you might just say anything. Agree with me that it is best if, if you're perfectly healthy and everything's fine to have nuts and avocado be a, an occasional treat, but maybe not part of everyday yeah. cooking. Yeah. I mean, ideally. Yeah. I just can't moderate it. So I just don't eat it. And I haven't dropped dead, you know? No, but no, that's the whole point. I mean, so many people maybe can moderate, but if you can't, then it's so much easier doing what you're doing. Like you just said, you know what? I, I, one of my one of the campers at our well now camp said, um, "One hundred percent is so much easier than ninety nine." I I I gotta go, I gotta agree with that. Oh, um, Linda wants to know: Do you guys use dark cocoa powder versus what? I guess is it light cocoa powder? I, I've seen I've seen uh, dark blends. Yeah, whatever cocoa powder's on the shelf. Yeah. Yep. I don't use it very much. AJ. Do you all, do, do your subscribers, and I have n not talked to anybody about this, have you discovered Arctic Zero? Do you know it's, what I'm it, talking it's a, about? You know what? It's an ice cream, a vegan ice cream. And I think when Dr. Clapper and his wife, Elise, lived in the same city as me, she served some to me, if I remember correctly. But zero fat. It's zero, zero, zero. It has some sugar. It's, that's the problem. Yeah, sugar. But like you, I, if I have ice cream around, I can't stop. So she bought so like eight of them yesterday. So I bought, no, I bought one of each kind yesterday. And each kind is almost empty now. But they are amazing. If you eat the whole container, it's 160 calories. We, if it's we, in your house, it's in your mouth, as she always that's says. That's what I say. You know, I got to tell you guys, I, I didn't want to announce it because I didn't shoot my first video, but I just got the coolest machine and I'll tell you about it because see, I've always liked the champion juicer for making banana ice cream. I've had it for 35 years and I still recommend it as the best if people can afford it. However, the company sadly went out of business. So I cannot recommend it anymore unless people can get a used one on eBay or something. So I found this machine and, and I'm using it every day, but I'm going to make my first video for next Wednesday for my show. It's called the Ninja Creamy. And you literally take a can of crushed pineapple, freeze it in the container, and you have the most unbelievable, delicious sorbet. And it's just fruit. And, and so I went to Sprouts and I got uh, organic canned, and this is all in its own juice, pear, orange, mango, fruit cocktail. It's like um, my mind is blown. And so there's no sugar. It's literally just the fruit. And of course, no fat. That's awesome. I've heard about the, the Ninja. Uh, we have used Yonanas just because we have them, but do you, do you um, say would it, it work in a Yonana machine? No, it wouldn't. So this machine is like, it's like a, okay, so there's a machine that's very high end that some of the vegan restaurants like Eric Lachesser's had called the Paco Jet, which is like a $4,000. It's like the best ice cream machine. And this is like the, the, the home consumer's version for just a couple of hundred. It's pretty darn cool. Let me tell you. I, 
What's it called? It's called the Ninja Creamy, but Creamy is spelled C-R-E-A-M-I. They just gave me a 10% code, which I'll you know, start using, but I'm going to be shooting my first videos this weekend and then putting them up one. You can actually, it works with applesauce. You can just take applesauce from the jar, put it in the thing. You have to freeze the little container for 24 hours and you have sorbet. So my mind is blown. I've taken other recipes like my date shake and my coffee shake, which really doesn't have coffee. And you turn it into like ice cream. And it's like, I'm having so much fun with this. So oh, wow. your next Wednesday, you're going to. Yeah. Yeah, so this Wednesday, I, I, Actually, this Wednesday is already yesterday. So, so no, it'll have to be next Wednesday. I do a recipe a week. So, yeah. So, oh, um, Lily says she saw it in Costco. So I think your mind is going to be blown because, you know, you think about it, you know, Charles eats real vegan ice cream. Like he'll go to Sprouts and get a pint and it's like $8.99. Well, a can of pineapple is like less than $2. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty cool. I think you guys are going to like it. But if you're afraid to use the Instant Pot, this might be more challenging for you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I will. I would FaceTime with you and teach you how we to use it. that. We deserve that. Tell tell Charles to try Arctic Zero. Okay, I, I put it on the thing. I'm going to look for it. Actually, and hopefully Sprouts will have it. I'm not anywhere near Whole Foods anymore. So uh, Donna says, "What about soy? What about soy? Maybe is it good for you? Is it bad for you? Um, you well, think? I'm going to uh, direct you. What's her name again? Uh, her name is Donna. Donna." Um, I want to direct you to the work of Dr. Christy Funk. And what I'm going to talk about, I learned from her. And she talked about how people have a hard time with soy, mostly around the concern of, of, of breast cancer. And she said very at one of our conferences, um, there are two kinds of receptors on our breasts, alpha and beta. And the alpha receptor is very responsive to estrogen. So when estrogen comes, like that we make as, we, as women and men, um, we make in our bodies, our, our, our subcutaneous fat tissue, our ovaries, or from food that we eat flowing through our bloodstream. And it engages with this alpha receptor and that promotes breast tumor uh, production or, or breast tumor growth. Then, then we have this beta receptor that is response is, is responsive to phytoestrogens and phytoestrogens, of course, are from what, what does phyto mean? Plant. Thank you, AJ. Phyto means plant. So plant, uh, uh, estrogen of plant origin, which means like, of course, in soy products, like soybeans, tempeh, tofu, soy milk, blah, 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 but also barley, wheat. Um, I mean, look at a list of phytoestrogens. You'll see this huge list of tons of foods. It's not like these phytoestrogens come from soy only, but what happens with phytoestrogens when you eat, for example, temp- tempeh or tofu is it goes slow through your blood and it lands on the beta receptor. It lands like this. So it kind of, and, and can you move your finger under there? So your alpha receptor, no, your alpha receptor is right here and your betas are here. So the phytoestrogens actually are protective so that the estrogen, estrogen can't land on the alpha to promote tumor growth. It's protected by the phytoestrogen bonding with the beta receptor. So the be- soy is protective. Some very old research that, was not, it, it's, it's, um, it's old news that it was bad news and it's now good news and it's good news that it's good news. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, compliment okay. Joe, Joe, oh, okay. Chris Jones book is Breast, the owner's manual. If you uh, want to get that. My, yeah. my husband, for my husband's severe heart disease patients, some soy is fine, but just you need to remember that soy is 40 plus percent fat. Some of it. And so, you know, soy for lunch, breakfast, and dinner is not a, a recommendation. Right. Absolutely. How do you feel about soy, AJ? Well, I'm allergic, so I don't have to worry about it either way. So I can't have it. So And there's, no, and there's nothing wrong with you by eating no soy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't eat soy. I don't eat nuts and I, people worry about me, but I swear guys, I'm fine. I'm really healthy. So, but it is. Uh, so Donna was saying specifically, is it good for heart health? That's what she was asking. Well, and soy is, you Just know, they, so you know, there's a million different kinds of soy, like isolated soy powder. No, but you know, some, I would go to the most basic soybeans and maybe edamame. Fine. Edamame is um, great. Um, and tempeh, and which tempeh. is fermented. You can even see the soybeans in tempeh. It's fine. And um, like, I, I mean, the problem with soy 
and is, is that it takes on any taste that you put on it. And the temptation is to put on very salty things to make it taste better. So if you have heart disease, you just might want to <clears throat> keep it somewhat occasional. Yeah. Kelly wants to know, how do you feel about soy curls? That's getting, they're, I know they're just soybean, but it's, it, it, I don't know. We don't eat them. We've had, we've had them. I know what you're talking about. Someone tried to get my brother Rip to spunk to be part of it. So you can call it Rip Curl. Very clever. <laughs> That's very, very clever. Uh, but it's so processed and like extruded. You know how there's that list that Clapper does about like whole things, then, then chopped or processed or whipped or dried or puffed, or maybe it was Davis. Someone does this whole thing. So these are like whipped, dried and extruded. So I would have them occasionally Hopefully. like being like you know once or twice a year at a, a graduation party or something if someone was serving them but i wouldn't buy them myself we, we don't and christine, christine says what about soy and thyroid health talk to your thyroid surgeon yeah so there's a compliment from joe bet about your scarf she loves them and wanted to know when you started wearing scarves ha! i started wearing scarves well, I teach middle school sex ed. Oh my God. You won't believe why she started wearing <laughs> scarves. I teach middle school sex ed and I have for since 90, 90. So that's 30 plus years. And I never know. And, and you know, you go through all, you know, anatomy and physiology or, or puberty from head to toe. And it's, it's so much a discussion about relationships and yourself and identity and, and how you identify and what you identify with your body and cisgendered and you know the spectrum of identity a spectrum of sexuality but when you get to the male anatomy what i always say is i am a penis this is the best way to do it so i'm a penis my body is the shaft and my head is the head and the scarf is what every little boy is born with which is his foreskin so they're born with a foreskin and when they grow up they just pull it back to pee or if they're born in a family that chooses to circumcise them, they can circumcise them and cut off the penis. Or if they're born into a Jewish family and then on day eight, the bris, they cut it off in a ceremonial setting with a bunch of friends and family. Um, so I never knew when I was gonna have to do the male anatomy lesson. So I would always wear scarves to, so I would be literally protected because the worst thing you have to do is like, hey, does someone have an extra jacket? Can I use your sweater? Like to, you know, use a kid's thing like, I'll never wear the sweater again. So I just have a variety of scarves and colors to go with my. And she just days. never knows when she's going to give a penis. Ex uh, you know, I love that. It's a, what, what a simple question had a wonderful. It's, a, it's the foreskin. <laughs> that is hilarious. I love that. Um, Nancy says, Thank I you did not expect that answer to the scarf question. Who knew that? <laughs> Stacy says, well, what about soy milk? You guys like oat milk the best, it's right? It's, it's, it's fine. And it has really but, good research around it with them. Um, but look at the soy milk you're getting. Make sure it doesn't read ingredients of yeah. everything you're buying. Some of it's really sugary. No oil and really, or sugar added. Yeah. yeah. Make sure it's clean as well. That is so true. You guys are just a hoot and a holler. And I'm so happy that Brian came on and that he's, you know, we can get him on sometime. He came on. Brian, did you hear that? He said, thank you. Okay, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but maybe you do. Apple wants to know how important is social connection for heart health? Huge. But if you don't have it, I think you can still keep your heart healthy. But you, you but know, it's so, you're going to want so lovely to. It's lovely to have people in your life. I mean, even connection. if you're an introvert and you and you don't, you know, really want to be with people, having someone in your life, I know, write letters, do something to connect. Just to try to connect. And I think, it, I think particularly when you're trying to eat plant-based, it's so nice to have somebody to eat with. Some people like to cook for themselves too, though. I've heard many people like, well, oh, I do, I do a candle and I do this. And I, well, but they won't do it for other people. Well, if yeah. it's how you're wired and you don't want connection, that's fine. But if you're looking, if you needed someone to say, reach out to get social connections, I'm saying reach out. And AJ, do you, ways do you, you have out. a social uh, connection? Yet? Well, that's why I moved from the desert because I didn't have one for three years. But here, there's so many people and meetup groups and so many people to to connect with. Yeah, yeah. 
Carol says, I love these two ladies and the content on their YouTube channel as well. So fun to see three of you great gals together. Oh, here is a question about mammography from Rebecca. Do you have an opinion on routine mammography? Because Dr. Christy Funk recommends it. I don't get them. I don't do anything doctors tell me though. So I do. I do. Because my family has filled with, um, like, I don't know if you've, I, when I present, I, the first thing I say is people um, think, oh, I want to be an assistant. I want your genes. And I'm like, oh, really? Because we are riddled with mostly cancer and heart disease and diabetes from like my all grandparents, all aunts and uncles, except for my mom and dad and one aunt of eight different ones, cancer, 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 and lots of breast cancer. So I get a routine one, but I say routine. Uh, my routine. So like every three years, five years, six years, or two years. So I, I, quit. I, I totally quit. I mean, I'm going to be 87. Forget it. So uh, I have done some and I don't think, um, I mean, I don't think I'm going to get them every year, but I'll, I'll get them here and there. My dad, AJ, my dad's a breast them? cancer surgeon too. So you should, AJ, do you know, she just said she didn't, you don't, I don't, I, you know, I stopped it. I'm, I'm 62 and at about 40, I just stopped colonoscopies and mammography. I, I mean, I, eat Actually, you're supposed to start them. Yeah, but I, <laughs> See, I just stopped. We you feel didn't start, lot. did you? We feel, no, I had had them because, but I just, I just, you know, I eat plant perfect and I, I just, I, I'm no, just not going to do it. If I'm, I get, if I get cancer, I'll go to true North. In fact, I just, I'm not going to do in it. In 56 and my dad, you know, my dad's a breast surgeon and a, and a, and a general surgeon for the you know, colon. And I was like, daddy, I haven't done, we haven't done that. Like colon, colon, uh, cancer screening. And he's like, are you concerned? And I was like, well, no, should I? He's like, you don't see, you don't seem concerned to me. So I did that whole like poop in a box thing. Oh, the cola guard. Yeah. I, I don't mind pooping in a box. I, I'll poop in a box for anybody. But they need to have a vegan size box because I know is- it's like they, they sent it back. They said, you put too much in, you got to do it again. No, <laughs> yeah, no, really. That's what they said. But I mean, that's, I, I heard that twice. I heard that twice. I mean, it's like the t-shirt. I, somebody actually has a t-shirt that says go vegan, take epic dumps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rick has oh, that one. Oh, AJ, I brought this. Can you see? I love that shirt. Yeah, that's from you. Eat your damn cow. I, I I love that shirt. I totally remember having that made. That is that's so true. And that's what I tell people to eat your damn cow. So you. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Mary says, I bought your book. Can you remind us when you receive it? So it's pre-order now. It's not coming out until August. August 23rd is when it should arrive. Um if you've, if you've pre-ordered and if you've pre-ordered again, try to go to my website and, and get the free video. Yeah. That's amazing. That is so you need to cool. and try to get that video so we can okay. say how it's done. Cause we keep talking about it. Yeah, we've guys- recorded it. We made it, we edited it and we don't even know how to get it out there. That's funny. Well, I think it's so funny that Anne can't subscribe to her own channel. <laughs> that is the funniest thing I've heard. I love it. I love it. Do you enjoy making videos for YouTube, Anne? Oh, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, you well, love it now. No, she, it was so funny when years ago, whatever it was, the first one, three years ago, we started. Around. I was so angry. I hated it. I didn't There's smile. no people here. There's nothing going on. And she just had had like a face treatment at the dermatologist. So she's the color of this shirt and it's, you know, it's December and we're doing this. So she's like bright red and mad. So go look at the very first thing we ever made. She's like this. It would change actually made us redo that whole thing because I didn't have She was such smile. a pouty pity party, a little kindergartner in the corner. It was, it was hilarious, but no, mommy, you now she totally enjoys them. Well, because I enjoy it because Jane gets everything organized and I just sort of have to show up. Well, that's not always true. It's a whole lot of work to get, you know, AJ, I mean, there's nothing harder than Prepping. doing prepping for a food demo. Oh. I mean, I would never do it on my own again in my life. Yeah. We just did a demo an, uh, an hour ago and we have another one coming up tonight. So we've got like- But Jane gets, is so organized. It's great. Cool. So I, I want to just talk for one quick second before we have to uh, go away about um, one of my favorite things in this book. And I think it's something that will interest you, AJ, although it's not at all what you do. 
and that is my favorite breakfast. And it's in here. What's it called, Jane? Woman, no, Anne's Warrior Breakfast. Steel cut oats. I, I feel what I eat, I want to have be healthy and something that makes a difference in my body. And to start the day like that, I know you do all vegetables, AJ. This I do vegetables and starch now. I mix it up now. I, I mix it up now. All oats. I then put in a half a teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of turmeric. I want to get turmeric in every day. I put in some nutritional yeast because it makes it so yummy. I put in about half a cup of shiitake mushrooms because mushrooms are great to have in your diet. And then I put in at least two cups of some green, any green I can get, kale, collards, carrot Good greens, top. radish, radish tops. I mean, bok choy, bo broccoli green. I mean, anything chopped up and a couple of cups of water and a little uh, sriracha because it does make a difference. And I, she and after, after how old am I? After 86 years of never knowing what would be the best breakfast, I can't wait for breakfast. And it just gets me going. It sounds delicious. Do you tend to like things a little bit spicy, Anne? No, no necessarily. This isn't, this isn't spicy. spicy. No, I'm I, just meant in general because you said a couple drops of sriracha. Yeah, but, it, but it, the sriracha, you know, somehow a little hot saucy thing gives it a little jump. Yeah, we're from Cleveland, Ohio. Like garlic salt is like our high speed here. Okay. Powder. So you're not you're not super spicy fans. No. no. Are you uh, medium? I like things kind of medium. I don't like them too mild, but I, I need a little heat. You know what yeah. I mean? I agree. And, and that's why I like my, my breakfast. Right. Donna says, are the mushrooms cooked in your recipe? Yes, I put. Yes, you should always cook mushrooms, I, I think. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. Well, you guys are so much fun. Don't wait for another book to come on. You guys can come on anytime. We can just chat. Uh, people are just so grateful listening to you. And uh, well, AJ, at the uh, last time that we, we, we were on, we my husband was on too. <laughs> His secretary said, oh my gosh, don't ever go back on AJ's program. She said she was inundated. With and calls and patience. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. Jokingly, like no, it was so I wow. Yeah. Put to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that's so great though. And then people are getting the information. Oh, so Dave wants to know. We we, we really uh, should have addressed this. It, it, she says it's a dumb question. Is this book geared more to women than guys, or can a guy buy the book too? It's a cookbook for anybody. But we just want to again for all the reasons I said up front here. This is a tip of the hat to women who have been bold and fierce and delicious carrying this message forward. But the recipes are for anybody and everybody. So thank you for asking that, Dave. You're more than welcome to get it. You're going to enjoy every recipe. Some of the content, if you have any women in your life, um, look at that. They'll be happy. You had a great photographer, great, great I love that lasagna. That's such a cool concept, stacking the plates like that. I've never seen that. Yes, Connie says, please come back soon. <laughs> Thank AJ, you. nobody like you. Like, hey, ideas for hot flashes, asks Bethany. Plant get based. off dairy, get off animals, and believe it or not, get off extra oil or any oil you're adding because that kind of gives a little fuel to the fire. It literally is like grease on a fire. If you get a little bit of extra oil in your day, I say extra meaning anything really, um, it tends to make things flare up a little bit, but it, 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 it did you have any hot flashes, Jane? You? Um, no, I've had some warm wind, but I haven't had hot flash. <laughs> I had to, they get wet and I'm like, I mean, I've been like, oh, like this. And then, you know, then I'm like, oh, burr. So I really do feel like it's, it's, a, it's random who gets what kind of symptoms, but Things have been really, it really makes a difference calm and normalized. I think letting your own estrogen be what's guiding your body through menopause. And like, you don't even remember if you went through menopause. Oh yeah, I did. Well, you, because I was, I had, that was before I was all totally plant-based. Did you have hot flashes? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There you go. I don't, 
So good luck with it. Um, I forgot the name who asked that, but thank you for asking that. Uh, Bethany, you know, I could have sworn I heard Dr. Linda Carney once say that for hot flashes or for menopause, no coffee, no caffeine, no alcohol as well. Oh yeah. I'm sure all those I, things are better I, for you. You know, if you can not, if you can get rid of them, do it. Yeah. I mean, that, that stuff is why, help. what is going to help? What's improving yeah, you want your you. liver to be clean to be able to get, process all that estrogen and stuff. So, um, yeah, alcohol is not. I mean, helpful. AJ, as you know, and all of your guests know the the closer you can come to being plant perfect, the better you are, especially if you have especially any, if you already have a disease. That's the thing. People don't understand when you already have a disease, it's much different than if you're, you know, a 20 year old athlete at your ideal weight. Yeah, right. How, however, mm -hmm. those 20 year olds, you know, suddenly are, are 45 and they're told they need to go on statins. And uh, hmm. I agree. Brian's to go for a tire drag, it looks like. Dave says, thanks. My wife is a warrior woman. She's had bypass and ovarian cancer and is trying this way of eating now because our doctor suggested this. So this is a great book then because your recipe. Oh, awesome. Yes, Dave. Yes, Dave. You enjoy this book and thank, and, and this thank you. For, and thanks to your doctor for recommending eating plant-based. And, and well this is done. for all people, not just women by women. Many means. It's a tip of the hat to those women. I mean, hey. if this was, if it's a book for men, no one would be really questioning it, but for women. You know, and, and that wonderful book, what is the book where the mouse is hiding and you're always looking for it? Good Night Moon. In Good Night Moon, you always are looking for the little mouse somewhere. But when you get this book, one of the things you need to look for in every picture, see if you can find the flowers that are hidden in that picture. Oh, I love that. I love that. That'll be fun. Well, there are the two or three that don't have any flowers. Well, but that's yeah. because it was before we realized that we could find the flowers. It was in May. <laughs> the, the little flowers in the yard was so fun. So fun. Um, Eunice wants to know if you guys ever wear bindies. Oh, a bindi bindi? Uh, yeah. What's I, it, I, Eunice? I, I, actually, I got some bindies when, I, when we were in India, and I brought them home for our grandchildren. And they were, uh, so, they, they were so young that my kids, they were, they've got bindies from Anne Nessie from India. They love, they love the, I, I mean, I think if we're saying the right word, apologies for not doing it. Yeah. I'm apologizing, but bindi. So when my daughter got a pair of polka dot socks, she's like, mommy, where are my bindi socks? Because she thought <laughs> that dots were bindies, not polka dots. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey, so Elise says, if you've had stomach stapling and you can't eat large amounts of food, what would be the most powerful plant foods to eat? Oh, that's a great question. And I would that's say really tough when, when, when you, well, just on that little, side little of the bits of greens, um, beans, <laughs> vegetables. Um, yeah, but they, not in large amounts. Yeah. You, they, they eat more frequently maybe. Yeah. Greens are just magical. And if and you like them I all, would like suggest them cook them well, yeah, because, might be easier because the, it's much easier. Yeah. That's great. Nice. Um, I'm miss, yeah, seeing you guys. You guys are the funnest. Thank you, AJ. It takes one it's to know so one, AJ. lovely. Yeah. Well, anytime. And I'm so I'm so happy Brian popped in and to tell us the, the work that you're doing with the Esselstyn Foundation because we'll definitely promote that and have him on either doing a demo or doing his talk. There, the real. There's a lot of interest in how to get your man to eat meat. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yep. And I'm gonna go off and eat my damn kale. And I'm going to keep talking about our darn kuvas. Um, but most of all, we're going to talk about be a plant-based woman warrior. Live fierce, stay bold, eat delicious. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. We love you so much. And congratulations on your book being number one new release in heart health. Thank you, AJ. Thank, Thank you, AJ. Oh, the Great. pleasure was all mine. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Maria Rimmerman. She is known as the Whole Food Plant Based MD on social media. And she's going to be talking about effortlessly losing weight and transforming your health by adopting a whole food plant based diet. One more time. What's the name of the book? Wait, 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 no, wait, Maria, wait. she was one of our best recipe testers for this book. She's our neighbor across the street. Oh my God. Well, she said, that's so funny because she insisted on coming on the day after you. She's like, well, when I are they coming I said, on? come on the day after, because we're talking about the book before she did so much recipe testing for us. She and her daughter, Eleanor, 
And Tessa, Eleanor has been amazing. Also, her daughter. Yeah, and she's she's in med school or something like that now. And she um, was my editor for one of her books I did with Rip. But that's, I'm so excited. Hello to Maria from us, even though we're going to see her probably before you do. It's so um, funny. I didn't, I mean, I couldn't figure out why, why is it so important to come after? I mean, like a day is a day. I don't know. I want to come after them. That's hilarious. Oh, she's, she, you're going to love she's, it. She's adorable. Yeah. Well, Rachel says this was the best interview ever. I'd have the Gato Gato lady on too if she wanted to come. I thought she was wonderful. Isn't she wonderful? Mm -hmm. well, she's just interesting. What she does in life is interesting. Yeah. She, you know what? I'm going to let her know. Ooh, I'm Carol secret. Reed, my neighbor just pre ordered the book. So, yeah, guys, well, we got all the links. Just get the book. Come on. Keep it at number one. It's so great when plant based books do well. Everybody gets elevated. Yes. Thank you. AJ. All right. Thank you, AJ. Thank Thanks, you so much. Thanks, guys. Take care. Hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Keep Thank you.